Good morning, boys and girls. I hope you're having a great day. Um, I really enjoyed our Zoom call yesterday. It was a great um, chance for us to all see each other. It had been a couple weeks since we've been able to Zoom, so that was really nice to be able to see all you guys. We got to wish Isabella a happy birthday, and I'm very excited for our Zoom call tomorrow at one o'clock as well. Um, today, what we're going to be talking about, we're still on packet number three. And today I'm just going to break down each of the activities in the math section for packet three. So remember, <clears throat> in this packet, every day you should be picking an activity from each section to complete. Then at the end of the week, you're going to pick two of the activities that you did from each section. So two from literacy, two from math, and two from content to have your parent or adult take pictures of and send to me or Mr. Overton. So let's get started with the math section for today. The math menu options start with, a lot of these are word problems, so I'll just kind of break down what they're asking you to figure out. <clears throat> and say, I like to say that they used and the name of one of the students in our class in this first problem. Sam and Javion's garden, um, excuse me, in Sam and Javion's garden, there are two types of ladybugs. There are red seven spot ladybugs with seven black spots and shiny black four spot ladybugs with four red spots. So there's ladybugs with seven black spots and then a different kind of ladybug with four red spots. Sam and Javion looked at a leaf with three ladybugs on it. One seven spot ladybug, said Sam, and two four spot ones. That's 15 spots altogether, laughed Javion. How would you make 16 and 14 spots with seven spot and four spot ladybugs? What other numbers can you make with add, by adding fours and sevens? So what they're asking you to do, <coughs> is to figure out how many of each kind of ladybug you would need to have 16 spots altogether and how many of each ladybug you would need to have 14 spots altogether. So what you're gonna do, it says that there are both types of ladybugs there. So you can't say that all of them were the seven spot kind or all of them were the four spot kind. We need some of each. So you could start, I would definitely draw some pictures to help. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That could be your seven spot ladybug. One, two, three, four. That could be your four spot ladybug. Now, if I add seven and four, think about your 10 frame in your mind. If you need to count the spots, count the spots. That gives me 11. Now it says that you need to have 16 spots in all, and then they ask you to make 14 spots in all. So how could you do this? We have 11 right now. Think about how you could make 14 spots in all and 16 spots in all. And I'm actually going to say that you can have all one type of ladybug or all another type of ladybug. You can do that. So I just wanted to make that clear because I don't think it actually says that there have to be both kinds. So if you want to use two of the seven spot ladybugs to make one of those numbers, you can. <clears throat> but they just want you to come up with the ways that you can show 16 spots or 14 spots with the um, different types of ladybugs from the problem. And then at the end, it has a kind of like a bonus question that says, what other numbers can you make with adding fours and sevens? So it's asking what others you could make by putting fours and sevens together. Make sure at the end of the problem, you write how many of each ladybug that you are using. So the question is, how would you make 16 and 14 spots with the seven spot and four spot ladybugs? If you use two seven spot ladybugs, 
at the after you've drawn your pictures and figured it out right two seven spot ladybugs because then we know and circle it and so we know that's your answer so that's the first question that you can choose to do in the math section the next one says if you have 10 i'm going to draw these It says, if you have 10 counters numbered one to 10, how many can you put into pairs that add to 10? Can you use them all? Show how you got your answer. So when it says put them into pairs that add to 10, that means match up two of these numbers that would give you 10. So I'll do one for you. If I add one and nine, that gives me 10. So I could write one plus nine equals 10. What other numbers could you add together that are here that could give you 10? You can draw a line to connect them and then write the problem like I did. So, and it says to see if you can use them all, match up all the numbers to another number to give you 10 when you add them together. <clears throat> then it says, for a challenge, try finding all of the pairs that add to 12, 15, 18, 20, 11, 13, 17, 14, 16, and 19. So it says, after you've figured out the, the matches that give you 10, it's asking you to find the pairs or the two numbers here that would give you those higher numbers, 12, 15, 18, 20, 11, 13, 17, 14, 16, 19. So for example, one of them that the challenge one is asking you to figure out is 11. If I match the one to the 10, when I add one and 10, that gives me 11. So that could be a problem that you write for your challenge answer. So you're matching up these numbers. First, you're matching them up so they equal 10. Then for the challenge, you need to find the numbers that add up to those numbers listed in your packet. So that's the second option for packet number three in the math section. For the third option, it says Sophia and Michael were making necklaces to sell at the school fair. Each necklace was to have eight beads, four of each color, and four of, or excuse me, four of one color and four of another. Here is one they made. Excuse me. And the necklace, the picture that they have there is a necklace with four red beads and four yellow beads. <clears throat> It says, how many different necklaces could they make with eight beads? Can you find them all? How do you know there aren't any other? So it says, how many different necklaces could they make using eight beads? So the necklaces that they made had four of one color and four of another. But this question is asking you, if you made a necklace with eight beads, those are my beads on my necklace, I know they aren't very good. How many different ways could you have the colors? So they chose to do four of one color and four of another. I want to see what other ways you could do it. So there have to be two colors, but you could do one red and seven yellow. You could do one yellow, seven red. Show the different ways that you could think of the necklace being made. 
there have to be two colors, but try and find the different ways that they could have eight beads in two colors. So if you did one red and seven yellow, that's showing me the one red plus the seven yellow equals eight. Try and figure out the different ways that you could make this necklace with two different colored beads, two different colors on the beads, but tell me how many of each color you just, you can make. And it says challenge, what if they had nine beads, five of one color and four of another? What could it look like if they had 10 beads? So it's asking you what the necklace could look like with different numbers of beads. <clears throat> The next question says, Ramona and Sonia were sorting some pictures of shapes on cards. I'll collect the circles, said Sonia. There are lots of those. I'll take the red ones, answered Ramona. I like red. Can you see any cards that have, that they would both want? So circle and red. Here's the picture of all the cards they had. How many cards could they have had each? How many ways can you find to sort the cards? Can you see any cards that are the same as other cards? So I actually have this. I'm gonna share my screen with you in one second because there isn't a picture in this current one on the packet, but I was emailed the picture. So I'm gonna pull that up for you now. Okay. Let me share my screen with you. So let's read that again with the pictures for the cards. Ramon and Sonia were sorting some pictures of cards, of shapes on cards. I'll collect the circles, said Sonia. There are lots of those. I'll take the red ones, answered Ramon. I like red. Can you see any cards they would both want? So that would mean that they're both red and circles. I see a couple of those. Here's a picture of all the cards they had. How many cards could they have e had each? So how many circle cards would Sonia have? How many red cards would Ramon have? And then you can put a separate um, category for the ones that they would both want. How many ways can you find to sort the cards? Can you see any cards that are the same as other cards? So it's basically asking you to sort by property, which is something that we talked about in packet number two. You're gonna practice sorting by property. So what I would do is you can either cut out cards and try and make your own, or you can draw pictures. So you could make, a circle for Ramon's shapes that he would have. An area for Sonia's shapes that she would have. We could put a area for both. So the ones that they would both want could go here. So look at all the shapes that you see. Which one, which ones are red? Those would go in Ramon's area. Which ones are circles? They would go in Sonia's area. 
If they are both red and circles, they would go in the both area. And if they would not fit in any of them, you would put those together. Because <clears throat> the squares wouldn't go with anything. So maybe you could put all of the squares together. The triangles don't have a category either. So maybe you could put the triangles together. The triangles that aren't red. So the questions that you have to answer is, <clears throat> First, you need to put down the cards that they would both want. So those would go in your both section. Then it says, how many cards could they ha have had each? So after you've sorted all of the shapes, write down how many Ramon has, how many Sonia has, and how many they both would have. Then it says, how many ways can you find to sort the cards? So then make sure you sort the ones that don't have a category. Put the, put the squares together maybe, and the triangles together maybe. And then can you see any cards that are the same as other cards? So do you see any cards that are um, basically doubles? They're the exact same, same color, same size, same shape. So make sure you answer each of those questions and draw out how you would sort the cards. And um, make sure you list how many would be in each category and answer the questions. Don't just sort them. You may have to make sure that you're answering the questions that are being asked. So that is your fourth option for a math problem. Now we're gonna look at the next options for math. So this says, I see 20 arms on the beach. If some of the arms are on sea stars and some are on people, how many sea stars and how many people could there be on the beach? What other combinations could there be? So this is very much like um, a couple of the problems that we did last week. So last week there were some where I said there could be more than one answer. And as long as you have the total number, your answer could be correct. That's like this problem. I'm gonna read it again for you. I see 20 arms. Oh, let me share my screen so you can see what the C star looks like. So we're right here. I see 20 arms on the beach. If some of the arms are on C stars and some are on people, how many sea stars and how many people could there be on the beach? What other combinations could there be? So a sea star has, count the arms, one, two, three, four, five. A sea star has five arms. And how many arms do we have? We have two arms. So it says that there are, There are 20 arms in all. So as long as you create a problem where you have 20 arms in all, that could be the right answer. But remember, it doesn't say it's all C stars or all people. It says there are C stars and people. So make sure you have both kinds. So you would, you could draw your C star, try your best to draw one. That's my best sea star, not the best, but that's okay. Or you could just draw dots if that's easier. That's five. And then if we have a person, they have one arm, two arms. So that would be five, six, seven. Then keep adding until you have 20 arms in all. Then see if there's another way that you could do it that's different with a different number of sea stars and people that also gives you 20. So that's what it asks at the end, what other combinations could there be? So your job is to figure out how many sea stars and how many people were on the beach to give you 20 arms and then try and figure it out another way. And you're gonna, again, use pictures. Then I want you to write it out 
so we have pictures, numbers, and words to show our thinking. The next one says draw, write, or tell how you could make a 10 to help you solve these problems. Can you solve each problem another way? So it says you have several different math problems listed, three different problems. And then it says, I'll read it again for you. Draw, write, or tell how you could make a 10 to help you solve these problems. Can you solve each problem another way? So what I would do, when it says show how you would make 10 to help you solve these problems, I would use 10 frames. That would be the best way to me. And for each of these problems, you are going to need more than one 10 frame. So for the first one, Okay, for the first one, we start with eight. And then we're adding five. One, two, oh, we filled one 10 frame, so we need to go on to another. three, four, five. So what is eight plus five? Think about it. If I have one full 10 frame, you shouldn't have to count one, two, three, four. If it's a full 10 frame, we should know that that is 10. And then we have three fills in here. What's 10 and three together? If we have 10, let's just count on. 11, 12, 13. And then go on and do the same thing for the next one and the next one. Use the 10 frame to show how you would make 10. Fill up a 10 and count on to give you that answer. That's another option for your math problems. The next one says start with three pairs of socks. So this is going to be something that you actually do at home. So you need to find three pairs of socks. Now mix them up so that no mismatch pair is the same as another mismatch pair. So they should all be mixed together. Then it says, now try it with four pairs of socks. Is there more than one way to do it? Draw a picture to show how you matched your socks. <clears throat> so I'll read that one more time. Start with three pairs of socks. Now mix them up so that no mismatch pair is the same as another mismatch pair. So maybe you have a pair of white socks, a pair of red socks, and a pair of blue socks. Then mix them all together and make it so that each pair is matched with a different color. So you could have a red sock. and a white sock, those could be together, but you couldn't have another set of red and white because it's saying that mix them up so that no mix match pair is the same as another. So you could only have one set of red and white, you could only have one set of red and blue, but you have to try and make it so there's no repeats, but they're all mixed up. Now try it with four pairs of socks. Is there more than one way to do it? Draw a picture to show how you matched your socks. So once you've mixed them up and you've made sure that there's no matches that look like other matches, so there's no, <clears throat> or excuse me, so there's no mismatches that are the same as other mismatches. So you couldn't have red and white and red and white. No, they have to be all mixed together but that you can't have any repeats. Once you figure that out, I want you to draw a picture of how you had your socks so that they are mixed together, but that no mismatched pair is the same as another mismatched pair. And then it says to try with four pairs of socks. Try and 
do even more. The last option for your math menu for this week says, I asked my family if they wanted hamburgers or chicken for dinner. Three wanted chicken and one wanted hamburgers. Think of a question you wanna ask your family. Create a graph showing their answers. Make sure to label it. What do you notice about the data? Write at least three statements that describe your data. So I'm gonna show you a graph based on the first um, little paragraph of information that they used as an example. So it said, I asked my family if they wanted hamburgers or chicken for dinner. So I'm gonna draw my graph like this and I'm going to do chicken, hamburger, and these are my food choices down here. These over here will be number of people. So this would be one, two, three, four. So let's see. I asked my family if they wanted hamburgers or chicken for dinner. Three wanted chicken and one wanted hamburgers. So they only had, so I'm gonna match up one person. Want a hamburger? And they had three people want chicken. So when it asks you to write at least three statements that describe your data, what statements could I write about the example problem? I could say, my first statement could be, Fewer people wanted fewer people wanted hamburgers than chicken. So less people wanted hamburgers for dinner rather than chicken. So I could say, chicken had the most number of votes. Then my third statement could be, if three people wanted chicken and one person wanted hamburgers, three plus one tells me how many people were asked in the whole thing. So four people answered the question. So my third statement or sentence is four people voted for what they want for dinner. My first one said fewer people wanted hamburgers than chicken. Chicken had the most number of votes and four people voted for what they want for dinner. So now when it asks you to do something, it says think of a question you want to ask your family. So this one was what they want for dinner. Pick a different question. It could be what their favorite color is. It could be what their favorite sport is. You come up with a question. 
Then it says create a graph showing their answers. So you would create your own graph. I made the one for the example problem, but you can use it as an example. Make your own graph to show what your family answered your questions with. Make sure to label it. So make sure you label, if you ask them their favorite color, make sure you have the different colors at the bottom here. If you ask them their favorite sport, make sure you have the different sport choices down here. Make sure you label how many people on this side. What do you notice about the data? Write at least three statements that describe your data. So then write three sentences about things you learned from your graph after you're done. So come up with your own question to ask your family, and then you're going to make a graph based on their answers. And write down three things that you learn from the graph after you create it and label it. So those are all of the math choices um, on your math menu for packet number three. Tomorrow I'm going to explain all of the science um, questions and options in the science menu for the content section. Then at the end of the week, just make sure that you send me something from each section so that I can mark that you turned it in. That'll be great. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. Tomorrow we'll have another class Zoom at one o'clock and I will make sure to send out that Zoom information before we Zoom on Thursday. Um, I hope that you guys have a great day and um, class, I miss you, I love you, and I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon.